When determining occlusal classifications, a class one occlusion, what you want to look for is the center or buccal groove of the mandibular molar, occluding with the mesial buccal cusp of the maxillary molar. What I like to do is find the buccal groove, place my probe on the buccal groove of the mandibular molar, and then look to see where it's at in relation to the mesial buccal cusp of the maxillary first molar. So in this case, you can see they're right in line. That is a class one occlusion. Now, if that position shifts, then again, I'll bring my probe to the buccal groove of the mandibular molar, and I'll say, where am I in relation to the mesial buccal cusp of the maxillary molar? Now, I can say that I am mesial to that cusp. Because I am mesial, this is meso occlusion or class three. Then the next thing that I need to ask myself is how far am I into meso occlusion? Because I have to be at least the width of a premolar to be a true class three. So if I come here and I measure the premolar, I say I have about a seven millimeter width of the premolar. Now I'm going to place my probe on the mesial buccal cusp and say, am I at least seven millimeters from the mesial buccal cusp to the buccal groove of the mandibular molar? And I am, so this is a true class three. Now, if that distance were less than the width of a premolar, so here, I am still mesial occlusion, I'm mesial, buccal groove, mandibular first molar, mesial to the mesial buccal cusp of the first molar. However, I am only about four millimeters mesial. So this is a tendency towards a class three occlusion. The same is true of a class two occlusion. If I come here, the jaws are positioned this way. And again, I'm always going to go buccal groove of the mandibular first molar. I'm going to place my probe in the center, and I'm going to say, where am I in relation to the mesial buccal cusp of the maxillary first molar? And I am now distal to the mesial buccal cusp of the maxillary first molar. So this is distocclusion, class two occlusion. And then I must do the same thing. Is it a true class two? And the way that I do that, again, I would measure the width of the premolar. We've already done that and determined it's about eight. And so I come to the buccal groove and I say, am I separating those two surfaces, the buccal groove of the, max, or the mandibular molar and the mesial buccal cusp of the maxillary molar? Are those apart at least the width of a premolar? And in this case, yes, they are. So this is a true class two. But if I have a relationship that looks something like this, then again, I come here, say, where am I in relationship to the mesial buccal cusp? I'm still distal, but I am less than the width of a premolar. And so this is a tendency towards a class two occlusion. The trickiest part of occlusion is remembering the surfaces that must occlude for a class one. So if you always remember buccal groove of the mandibular molar, mandibular first molar, and mesial buccal cusp of the maxillary first molar should occlude, then wherever the teeth are positioned, just always come to the buccal groove of the mandibular first molar and then ask yourself, where am I in relation to the mesial buccal cusp of the maxillary first molar? And answer mesial or distal. Here again, I am distal to that cusp. So this is distocclusion. And the only other thing you have to remember is that distocclusion is class two and mesial occlusion is class three.